Washington, 95.9 WMMJ HD3 Bethesda, WKYS HD3 Washington, WPRS HD3 Waldorf and worldwide at WOLDCnews.com. The following program is paid for by Barbara Arnwine. Welcome, welcome to Igniting Change. Oh, we got a great show for you today. We're going to just love it because our show today is all about the Gen Z generation and about their activism around voting rights. In fact, the whole subject is titled Salma, the Power of Youth Act activism then and now. Uh, Yes, folks, a lot of people, some folks know about the then. Let's talk about the now today. And we are so excited. Let me welcome to our show my mighty, mighty, mighty co-host, the chairman of the board of directors of the Transformative Justice Coalition and one of the nation's mightiest lawyers, and one of the most creative forces in our movement, I'm calling on no other than Daryl D. Jones. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Barbara. It must be Tuesday. It must be noon Eastern Standard Time because we're talking about igniting change across America. And my goodness, Barbara, you know, whenever change has been ignited across America, You always had adults that were out there talking about change, but who was in the streets pushing for the change? It was the youth. It was the kids. It was the young folks. My, my, my. Pushing for the change. And my goodness, you know, not that the uh, the adults weren't there too, but we know that, you know, once uh, Dr. King got the youth involved, that things were changing and was really pushing forward on change. And so we're so excited today to have this show focusing on our Gen Zs, focusing on our young millennials and youth, Barbara. It, it, it's just an exciting time. And it's focusing on Selma, uh, which is coming up. Everybody, every year there is a beautiful, what's called Jubilee commemorative um, event that is held in Selma for over, you know, five days with a reenactment of the Bloody Sunday March. And you're going to hear more about that as we talk. But this year's, uh, you know, Selma Jubilee has been held from March the 1st until the 3rd. Uh, and we are excited because TJC is going to be there. And we're not going to be there just as an organization. We're going to be there with our mighty, mighty, mighty TJC fellows. You're going to hear all about our alumni and about these amazing young people. So to bring this story to us as the people themselves, I want to welcome to the show Cameron Barnes. He is a National Youth Adult Policy Advocate, National Youth Director of Rainbow Push, uh, TJC Fellow and Freedom Writer, Director of Youth, and Young Adult Engagement, New Faith Missionary Baptist, I guess, Church of Chicago. And he is also, he has just written a mighty article that's going to be published in the Jubilee newspaper. Welcome, Cameron Bourne. Hey, Cameron. You know, it's always a joy, always a pleasure to be with TJC, especially when we're igniting change. I'm so glad to be with you, Attorney Armand, Attorney Jones. All right, now. And we, oh, come on now, Daryl. We don't, we never, ever, ever, ever uh, say that we don't have a full A team. And that A team also is composed of one Drake Smith. Hey, Drake is the, he is a transformative. Justice Coalition Certified Voting Rights Advocate. He is from the class of September 2022, and he is the student body president of Lincoln University. I want to welcome one of the nation's boldest creative advocates, none other than the mighty Drake Smith. Hey, Drake. 
Hey, 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 everybody. And I just got to say, well, I learned it from the best, from TJC, and uh, we're going to have a good time down in Selma. I'm good to be here uh, on the show today. Well, I am so happy, Daryl, that you brought Drake into our fold because uh, he well, I is fun. You know, I, yes. And I know and I know that Drake wants a little clarification because you said Lincoln University and he wanted to be certain that people knew that this was the HBCU Lincoln University oh, in Pennsylvania. Oh. Am I off on that, Drake? Absolutely, the nation's first. HBCU <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We got so much to talk about. And then our next um guest. It's been, oh, my gosh, he's been shocking people around the country, making audiences jump to their feet. He is one of the best orators of our times. He is brilliant. He's also a professor. Um, and, he, well, he also, you know, does incredible work uh, in uh, Chicago, has run for political office there, and he is an amazing, absolutely amazing leader. It is my pleasure and honor to welcome to our show today the mighty Edward Ward. Hey, Edward! How you doing? It is good to be here. Listen, I'm here for a good time and a long time. <laughs> all right, now. Well, Daryl, you know, the beauty is that all of us will be descending upon Selma. We will start arriving. Uh, some of the programs are as early as the 28th, uh, but we will be arriving, uh, you know, uh, beginning on the 29th, and we will be doing major programming on the, sec- on the second. So let me just get into our show and with some really important questions for our guests. Uh, first of all, Cameron, I know you have to leave at 12.30, so I'm going to you know, start with you. How many times have you attended the Selma Jubilee? <clears throat> well, yes, uh, Attorney Armand, and I regret that I can't be with the entire show, but I've been to Selma, ah, this is 2024. This may be my fourth time going to Selma, Alabama for the Jubilee, specifically for the Jubilee uh, weekend to commemorate Bloody Sunday. And and this year, you were determined to come. You know, you were <laughs> absolutely determined to come. It was like, if I got to ride the wind, I'm going to be there. Somehow, yes, <laughs> tell people, why was it so important to you to make sure that you were, that you are going to be in Selma this year? You know, uh, this particular year, first of all, we're in the midst of an election. We know that right now. And there is a commercial. I'm not sure if people have been seeing it going around, but there's a commercial. I believe it's centered around Comedy Central. And it starts off by saying, in an election year that's guaranteed to divide us as a, as a country. It goes on about the show that it will be talking about, so on and so forth. But we're talking about a very prevalent year, 2024 for us to go back to what I like to call the birthplace of our voting rights. Uh, Someone told us it was Miss Betty Massoni, the wife of Gary Massoni, who was an early organizer with Operation Breadbasket. She said to us last Friday at the Chicago History Museum that we only win a battle in order to fight another one. We never win flat out. The battle that they fought in 1965, going across the Edmund Pettus Bridge to secure our right to vote, that was a battle won. It secured our right to vote. But today, we still have to battle the battle to protect that right, because you already know what's going on in the Eighth Circuit in Arkansas and these 16 yes. states that say this should be done all across the nation. My, we my. Have another battle to fight. So it is not enough for us 59 years later after having gained the right to vote, it's not enough for us to then sit on it. We have to also protect the right to vote. So, yes, if I got to buy my own plane ticket, if I got to buy my own uh, hotel room, whatever we got to do, I won't ever miss going to Selma, Alabama for the Jubilee uh, Bridge Crossing. All you know, right, Cameron, Daryl. Really interesting because, you know, as you're saying that, Cameron, I, you know, what was uh, going through my mind was uh, hearing uh, Reverend Jackson, for whom you know, you've worked for for years, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. repeatedly saying, repeatedly saying that you know he goes to Selma every year 
because it's really an annual pilgrimage for voting rights, that it's really the uh, Liberation Day for black mm-hmm. America. This is the reason that people should be going to Selma to this celebration. Does any of that play into your reasoning for, for having to just be there to soak in the, you know, uh, the environment of, of what happens during that Selma Jubilee celebration? Oh, my goodness. It, to, the, the feeling, first of all, going back to Selma, for, if anyone's listening that has never been, I implore you, you must go. If, if you can't go this year, next year at the 60th anniversary is a good time for you to come in. But it's Attorney Jones, you know, uh, a feeling that you really can't explain. See, in my mind, once I get to the bridge, once we get to Selma, I continuously replay the black and white images that I've seen in history books, at least the ones that would write our history the correct way. I've seen those different things playing back in my mind. It is like Reverend Jackson says, the pilgrimage that, again, they did in 1965, Amelia Boynton, uh, John Lewis, all of these different people who go, went across that bridge. We then pay homage to them. And in that same breath that you said, Attorney Jones, to quote Reverend Jackson, Reverend Jackson says, we've never lost a battle that we fought. And we never won a battle unless we fought. So if we want to win in 2024, the fighting from 65 is not going to get us to the victory in 24. So they won that battle because they fought in 1965. And if we want to win our battle in 2024, we too have to fight. I have to go to do that same pilgrimage because we're no better than them. And they secured our right. It's our job to protect that right. And you know, uh, Drake uh, Cameron speaks of uh, th- this fight that uh, that the Gen Zs and young millennials are in, and this is the reason that uh, you all need to go down to to Selma to uh, to fill your cup with the spirit of John Lewis to continue with the fight. You know, what what is it about this uh, this challenge to young millennials and Gen Zs uh, that that exists today? What, how how do we see that? How is it how is it uh, manifested? On campuses like uni, uh, like Lincoln University and polling places and stuff like that. Well, you see it in a few regards. You see it in the challenge comes from misinformation going to students. Um, I forget which state it was, but they had a robocall going out telling people, "Don't vote in the primary. Vote in Maine. the general election." Yeah, that was Maine. Yes, yes, Maine. Um, you have it where you have things on social media telling folks where you can. Vote on social media, or your vote just doesn't matter. Um, and then you have it where there's voter intimidation. At Lincoln, one time in 2020, we had some community members. Well, actually, they're not community members. They're people that happen to live by us. They're not in our community. And they come to Lincoln with long guns, rifles, shotguns, and they're just sitting in the parking lot at the polls on campus. Um, they're trying to intimidate students. But uh, we just need to combat that with um, just our, our steadfast faith. I mean, no, 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 and I, I, no. I need we got to go put back a, to put, that. Put, put a hold on that. Put a, put, put a hold on that one now, Drake. Walk that by me one more time. What happened with people that lived outside the, uh, outside the Lincoln University community that came onto campus? Is that what you said? Yeah. So our polling and Wait a minute, wait a minute, Daryl. Daryl, he said in 2020. Did I hear that right? Absolutely, 2020. Whoa. Okay, and they, they have no, they have no, no, no business on the university with the university. Is that right? They're not students. They're not professors. Not custodians. Nothing. No, these were strangers. Absolutely, they're strangers and from the happened? outside area. So our polling precinct is on campus. We vote at our international cultural center, and on election day, it's not just Lincoln students that vote there, but it's also people that live in the surrounding community here in Southern Chester County. And you had a few bad actors come up and they are just sitting in the parking lot with their long guns in full view, right? Trying to intimidate students voting. This is 2020. We all know how crazy that election was. Luckily, Lincoln is a public private institution, which means we can close off our, 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 our um, we can close the campus to certain people. We can issue a persona non grata and um, our campus police got involved. Luckily, luckily they were removed from campus without any type of an, uh, any type of situation or anything happening. But uh, this is the reality that HBCUs face 
Um, there's still intimidation in 2020, 2024 of uh, students just trying to practice their uh, right to vote. Wow. That is quite the story. My goodness. So. Every-